Good morning, everyone. Today is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. This has been a week of testing and anguish for our country. As a parish community, we need to be supportive and understanding that feelings and emotions are running high and that we need to treat each other with respect, empathy, and love. As I have said since we began this pandemic and shut down, we are all going to be tested on many levels, and we will have to find the place where we are grounded and evaluate the values we hold. Deeply rooted in our baptismal covenant is the affirmation that the entire human race is profoundly beloved of God. And as followers of Christ, we are called to live that love and share that love. This means that we must reject racism in any form we encounter it. Today, the Feast of the Holy Trinity reminds us that we are all created in the image and likeness of God and calls us to understand ourselves as persons united in community and to live our interpersonal relationships in solidarity, justice, and reciprocal love. In our communal life as Christians, we are sustained and guided by the strength of the Holy Spirit to do this. This cures our humanity wounded by injustice, oppression, hate, and greed. The Christian life is never lived out in isolation, but always in community, surrounded by the people we are called to love even when the loving is hard. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. I think that we are headed for a hot and turbulent summer. And it will be important for us to stay focused in Christ and the values of the gospel. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us and to move us and give us grace to offer our love, understanding, and compassion to our neighbor. Many of you know my devotion to St. Francis of Assisi. I would like to pray the prayer that is most often associated with his self-giving, humble spirit. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please join Deacon Tom, Sharon, and me now in morning prayer for this feast day of the Holy Trinity. Also join us at 11.30 a.m. for our Zoom version of morning prayer. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, come, come let us adore him. him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not, not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind, and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. 
He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He For has he come, come to his people and set them free. He has, has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Now the eleventh disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Action. The process of doing something especially when dealing with a problem or difficulty, according to the Cambridge English Dictionary. This past week, we all observed actions being taken by human beings. We saw the actions of protesters calling into question the death of George Floyd in police custody. We saw the actions of civil authorities in response to looting and destruction of property. We saw people all over this country taking sides, making proclamations, defending their opinions, condemning friends, neighbors, and anyone who disagreed with them. It was the perfect storm of anger, violence, injustice, and fear. There is an old Buffalo Springfield song from another hot summer in the 1960s. You may remember it. The words go, there's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I've got to beware. I think it's time we stop children. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. 
There's battle lines being drawn. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. History has the tendency to repeat itself, especially when we are forced to deal with issues that we have not sufficiently dealt with in the past. Societies tend to sweep things under the rug, kick the can down the road, rather than deal with the painful realities of our common life and the ideals that we may hold but do not live. You know, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We have been told that our actions speak louder than our words. Mostly, we see words and images media-driven flying around. Yet it is always the actions that matter. As a Christian, the actions that matter the most to me are the ones that reflect the teaching and example of Jesus himself. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus is about to ascend to his Father, and he is giving his followers last-minute instructions. He says to them, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Not only are we to share the good news of God's love and reconciliation with all people, we are to do it according to Jesus' command to love one another as he has loved us. Loving our neighbor as ourself begins with seeing all people as our neighbor. The ugly reality that is racism in our country, is by far a worse plague than any coronavirus. Racism seeps into all our interpersonal relationships and distorts our civic and community life and runs contrary to the gospel that Jesus taught and lived. Today is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. Preachers generally try to avoid any in-depth treatment of the doctrine and theology of the Trinity in sermons that run only about 10 or 15 minutes. The understanding of God being three in one and one in three goes beyond simple analysis and any easy explanations. In fact, most truthful things are not anywhere near simple. Life is complex, nuanced, ambiguous, and words used to explain things most of the time fail. There has been much philosophical speculation on the potential failure of language to get at the heart of things. All you have to do is look around and see how words fail us. Words may fail, but actions reveal what's in our hearts. Just as Jesus' actions revealed what was in his heart, and as John's Gospel teaches us and reveals what is in the Father's heart, so too the concept of the Holy Trinity gives us a model for human persons in community. There is an important theological term that is worth learning. It's called perichoresis. Perichoresis is a Greek word used to describe the community relationship of each person of the Godhead in the Trinity. The term can be defined as co-indwelling, that one person contains the other two, or that each person interpenetrates the others in a community of being. 
Perichoresis could be translated as rotation or going around. Some scholars picture this as a sort of choreographed dance. All members of the dance move as one precisely and fluidly to create a meaningful work and unity together. Perichoresis is the glue holding together Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in interpersonal relationship. The persons exist as persons by reason of their eternal relationship with one another. The Holy Trinity reminds us that we are created in the image and likeness of God in community and calls us to understand ourselves as beings in relation and to live our interpersonal relationships in solidarity and reciprocal love. Jesus revealed the Holy Trinity as a community of persons in an eternal relationship of love. Just as Jesus is the model for our actions, the Holy Trinity is the model of how we are to live and interact with each other as human beings in community. We are to mirror and imitate the inner love that calls us to community with one another, realizing that disunity is the opposite of perichoresis. This understanding of the interplay of divine love is important in our human interpersonal and social relations in that it provides a framework to transform our world into a more faithful reflection of the reality that is the foundation of all community. When I think about this, it seems so simple. So straightforward, love is the binding principle of all community. Unfortunately, in the human equation, there is always sin. Sin is the human propensity to destroy relationships. In fact, I think that is the definition of sin, destroying our relationship with God and others. And we destroy relationships primarily through what the Christian tradition has identified as the root sin, pride. Pride is a sin that has been the cause of a tremendous amount of misery throughout human history. And all people, whatever their background, upbringing, or culture, are by nature affected by pride. Every human being has this tendency to want to decide for themselves what's right and wrong and do away with God's law of love. Pride is an attitude of the heart where we decide that we know best and we set ourselves up as independent personal deities devoid of the community that is really God. Pride is what drives division, injustice, and violence, and begets a myriad of other sins. But there is a remedy, a counter to the root sin of pride, humility. Humility is a corrective to pride because it starts from the recognition that you are not always right that you don't have all the answers. It requires that we listen to one another and have compassion and empathy as to where other people are coming from. To be in community with people is to listen to them, to understand their point of view, to understand their heartaches and struggles and see their humanity. We can't always get it right. But as followers of Jesus, we must try. So much of the problem of racism is in not really listening to the experiences of others, not putting ourselves in their shoes. 
Someone asked me if the present situation in the country is making me question my faith in God. The answer is not at all, but I am questioning my faith in human beings. The question is, can we ever really learn to love without choosing who to love and not to love? Who is worthy of our love and who is not? Dorothy Day once said, I only love God as much as the person I love the least. We need to ask ourselves, who don't we love and why? And we are back to our actions and the values that go with them. What are our actions of love? Do we condemn people because they disagree with us or are different from us? Do we still have the ability to change our perspective and grow? Or are we imprisoned in our own opinions, unwilling to see another's point of view? Where our hearts are, this will determine our actions. Jesus was clear. We are to love one another and to work for unity among all people. And today, we are reminded of that. That very unity is foundational to the heart and community of God in the Holy Trinity. Amen. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Walk with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of the true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. serve you that your name may be glorified by all people we pray for father carl deacon tom and deacon candidate james Pecoy, and for all bishops priests and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on earth give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress we especially pray for emma levine and family virginia rudy ronald and angela bracciante lenore volpe jason kennedy the houston family nick maybe megan gladys valley rita whitmer paul gregory susan stewart Norm and Jan Terracino, Paul, Gloria Ferrer, Edhira Wolf, Maggie, Richard Gillespie, Josh Gage, Jeff Pinkle, Jane and Ward Coleman, Valerie, Ann Mayo, Madeline Nault, Kay Thacker, Miriam Benkiki, Dick and Carol Silvernail, Regina Madigan, Wayne and Layton, Connor, Marissa, and Keith, the Warner and Urchick families, Bill, Matthew, Terry, Terry Dahl, Rosario Ferrer, Nikki Maybe, Timothy Fogarty, Keith and Joseph, Andrew Vaughn and family, Adam Bynum, Kim Andrea Adams, Kathy Pinkle, Jim Tarvin, 
Richard Mather, Caitlin Stevens, Eileen Palacati, Bert, Crystal Martinez, Andy's family, Mary Ann and Mark Hildebrandt, Becky Gwynn, for those patients that are in hospice care, for the blessing and health of all our parish members. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Brazil and the Diocese of London. We pray for all military personnel serving overseas and at home, especially Master Sergeant Stephen Brown serving in San Antonio, Specialist Amanda Volpe stationed at Fort Rucker, Petty Officer Raphael Rispoli serving in the Coast Guard, and Lieutenant William Ash stationed in California. We pray for an end to hatred, prejudice, violence, and racism in our country and world, and the wisdom and compassion to overcome our divisions and mistrust as members of the human family and as beloved children of God. Comfort and heal those who are sick with the coronavirus throughout the world and protect their caregivers, doctors, nurses, and first responders. I ask your prayers for the, dis the departed. We especially remember Anita P. Gonzalez, Ricardo A. Gonzalez, Tammy V. Gonzalez, and all those who have died from COVID-19, and for those who have died in the past week in hospice care. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of God's rule shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in our heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh God, your name is veiled in mystery, yet we dare to call you Father. Your Son was begotten before all ages, yet is born among us in time. Your Holy Spirit fills the whole creation, yet is poured forth now into our hearts. Because you have made us and loved us and called us by name, draw us more deeply into your divine life, that we may glorify you rightly through your Son in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.